On my fucking business, they ain't fucking with us Clutching digits, tell the biggest fucking come and get us Ain't no love for bitches, just for making dough Can't I'm in this to the finish, just the way you go On my fucking business, they ain't fucking with us Clutching digits, tell the biggest fucking come and get us Ain't no love for bitches, just for making dough Can't I'm in this to the finish, let them hate us know Selling thousand dollar bags Good evening, welcome to the Fortnightly Report. Today's special guest is Losty. What's welcome up, to the show. What's up, brother? We're in um, Electric Sun Studios in Blacktown. Legendary. And uh, we're going to go through some questions from the fans. Aaron Don said, Do you expect 3 or 3.5 for $50? Uh, 3.5. At least. At least, come on. Don't be fucking tight, cunt. Mel Patterson said, Always wondered how the hell you scored that job at TAFE doing graph with us back in 07. Um, basically, I did graph when I was a young fella, and I got into a bit of trouble with it, and uh, a guy that I looked up to, which was 12, he was a writer from Blacktown, he died, and uh, those, you know, I got arrested and stuff, and those events kind of made me think twice about doing graph moving forward, so I went and hooked up with um, BISA, which is Blacktown Youth Service Association, and I pretty much just put my hand up to do stuff legally. I got copped a lot of flack from other writers in Blacktown. I remember my, my nickname was like Legal Losty, but the thing is like I was I was going and getting paid for graph then and then I was I had like legal walls all over Blacktown and there was one time I had f four legal walls in Main Street at one time. And I basically would go do all my legal jobs and then I'd keep the paint uh, left over and then I'd go and do, you know, my like walls and stuff and do my own shit later on. So um, I put my hand up for it and then it led to doing workshops and shit with kids. So I've done workshops all over Sydney now and um, basically showing younger kids that there's legal things you can do with graffiti and spray cans rather than just always getting into trouble. So I did a lot of work with people that have been in trouble, a lot of, uh, you know, just youth centre staff, PCYC, all that kind of shit. So, yeah, it's a good experience. That's good because the majority of graphers are doing something illegal and, you know, that just doesn't end up what, too, too many good places at most, most times. That's it. So, um, no, good on you for that. And um, Mel also would like to know what up-and-comer at the moment you reckon is going to go far? In Australia or America? Say Australia. Australia. Hmm. I'd say, uh, I was talking to Redback the other day. He's talking about doing an English EP next. I think once people hear his English stuff, I think that's going to be really interesting. And it's definitely going to, you know, you've seen the stuff he's done with Come Smoke With Me, With You. Yeah. and You know, he's done tracks with us for years. So I'd say... The only thing that stopped him from from really blowing up at the moment is is the fact that a lot of his stuff is in Spanish, so there's not a big Spanish speaking population in Australia, so a lot of people can't click with it. So I think once he gets out some English shit and it's on that proper platform, I think he's the one to watch. J Rad Static said, "When are you doing a track of Curse, bro?" We've already got one, don't we? For it, yeah, it's uh, a banger. It's a banger. We've, I've I've held on to it for a minute now. It's called Ain't No Love, so it's uh. It's me, Fort and Curse, and it's, it's, crazy. it's really good. It's We've had it for about a year now, and it still holds up. We've done it, we did, me and Fort did a version of it live at Curse's last show in um, in uh, Newcastle. Yeah. We performed it there, went off live. You can catch catch it on my YouTube, there's a video of that. So I'll be putting it out in the next few months on, on the next Legacy EP. Yeah, definitely something to look forward to. Yeah, it's dope. Bill Ward said, Losto, what inspires you to make the music you do? Because it's so different from everything else that you hear in Australia. Well, I grew up in the in the era where you had to be different. You know, like you didn't want, like, you know, the kind of 90s and and early 2000s especially. Like, the whole point was to that you didn't sound like anybody else. And, you know, like, the, I'm, a, I'm a big Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. And one of the quotes he's got in his book is, you know, go to where it's empty, don't go to where it's crowded. And... I really believe that, and I think I just with this new EP, you know, I was I was in a band for six years, and I hadn't done a solo EP or, or album or anything for a while, and I just just followed my truth in my inner truth of who I, who I really was, and like just spoke from the heart, and I wasn't, you know, like I was scared at first to kind of say the things I was saying and going in the, in the direction I was going because I knew that not many people would. We're doing the same thing and I was worried that people were gonna accept accept it. But once I got over people accepting it, I think that's when it just it just all came together really well and 
just had no fear. So I think just having no fear and when you step into a project is, is how to be different, you know? You just don't worry about what everybody else is doing and fitting into this and fitting into that. And the more you, you stay true to yourself, the more it's going to be unique, you know? Otherwise, there's no point doing it if you're doing something someone else has already d else has done or you got to bring something unique to the table. That's it. Well, people always talk about fake rappers, this and that. Like, there's, that's that's it. To me, that's the epitome of a fake rapper is someone that's not really just being themselves, you know? Like, I personally don't care about accents and that. I care more about, like, if the person's authentic to themselves. If, if, if people are authentic in their music, you feel it, you know? You really fucking... You connect with it straight away. Yeah. If you're you know? a gronk, be a gronk, and that's keeping it real. <laughs> but if you're a sick cunt, be a sick cunt. Be a sick cunt, yeah, it's be yourself. If you're a nerd, be a nerd, it's yeah. fucking... That's it's... what real is, it's not about being hard or tough or anything like that. Uh, see, just, just be yourself. People, there's, there's people that are going to connect with nerds, and there's people that are going to connect with hard cunts, and there's nerds that are going to connect with hard cunts, and there's hard cunts that are going to connect with nerds, so... There's a lot more gay cunts these days, so <laughs> some of you gay cunts might have an audience for some of the shit you do, so... Never know. Adam Fitzroy said, uh, question, do you predominantly write your own lyrics and do you write your, or do you write your lyrics around a beat or get a beat made around your lyrics or both? Majority I write to a beat, um, but in saying that, I like when I'm driving around in the car for some reason, that's when a lot of like one-liners come to me, so I'll get out um, just my iPhone and record one line here and one line there and, you know, get it done like that. Um... As for other people's lyrics, if I'm in the studio, like, collaborating and someone's like, you know, you should you should try this or try that, I'm always open to it. I, I've never let anyone write my verse for me, but if someone suggests, I mean, we've done it before, we've said, mm. hey, say this line and do this line and this hook, and like, if you don't know, remember that song? That, that, was, that was Ford's hook. I reinterpreted it myself, changed a couple of things around. I think that's good collaboration is staying on the same page as the people you're working with, so... Yeah. Matt, um, Matt J said can you two do more collabs like if you don't know them days were the shit uh, the thing people don't know about that song is that how long do you reckon it took you to write your verse 10 minutes exactly so we you gotta remember at that period of time that was when my first mixtape came out and his first mixtape came out and if you look at how much we featured on each other's mixtapes at that time we were in such a groove of doing shit together, we could take, I, I reckon I would have taken 20 minutes to write mine, he took 10 minutes to write his. I think I came with like three songs or something. That day, and yeah. that was one of them. Yeah. I, he, was, I had the, the, the verse and the hook, and I said, here, you just top that off. He, he, four came in the studio, and he put down three things. I fell asleep on the couch in the studio, because I was, I think I was hungover, and I woke up and there was three songs done. Yeah, so, because if you don't know, it was um, that Snoop beat, Ain't No Fun. Ain't No Fun. And... Um, there was another one that never came out. Was it about weed or something? Oh, that, uh, was, that was the, your one. Drop a, drop smoke, a lock. Smoke, smoke, smoke a lot of pot. pot. Yeah, yeah. we've read back. I think there was one more maybe. Uh, they were done in the same session. That's it. So and even here, Electric Sun, there was a time when, you know, like when, when I still lived in Blacktown, I was coming down here a lot. There's tons of tracks that we did here that just never came out. They got lost in hard drives and shit like that. Like these days, we collab on the special things because, you know, we, we both live, we used to live two streets from each other. Like we grew up next to each other and collabing was an easy thing you know we'd, we'd do it all the time non-stop and now it's a different story you know like i live a 45 hour, hour kind of drive away i got a family fort has got all this shit going on you know so when we cut when we come together we make sure it's for something special but we don't have that unlimited time like we did when we were young you got to remember like shit like if you don't know it came out nearly what 10 years ago now was, yeah, no, yeah probably that's the old one yeah so it's it, it's good but it's timeless music you know like it's it's, it's crazy, that track, for something that took him 10 minutes and me 20 minutes to write, people are still talking about it all these years later. And I, I still have people coming up to me telling me that's like one of the favourite things that we've done together. So, you know, if you want to if you want to check all the old shit, there's stuff on my Roll With The Punches album with me and Fort. There's stuff uh, on his first mixtape, second, third, you know, my all my mixtapes have got Fort on it. There's loads of Lost Time With Fort collabs and there's that, there's that one we talked about with Curse coming up. Christian Proctor said, who is the most influential MC in your career? Fuck. Um, kind of goes different time periods. Like, when I, when I was young, I'd have to say, like, Everlast and Be Real, like Everlast from House of Pain and Be Real from Cypress Hill were probably, and, you know, Ice Cube. Um, and then as I got older, Eminem, you know, had a massive effect. I think he believed, he made all us white people believe that, you know, we really, really could be rappers, that we raised the bar and influenced us. And to be honest, you, like, 
you were the first person that ever like you know because I asked my friends for advice and you know I, I said to you how can I be better and you said oh you got to do more multi syllables it was you that you that taught me about them so mm. like I know I think any multi syllable I did before you told me that was a fucking mm. pure coincidence like yeah. it was you that said you got to have more multis Stop in your raps about that shit. yeah yeah so it's definitely that and Big Earl taught me that shit so there you go Jackie Byron said what advice would you give to a beginner man figure out think 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 from the end like figure out who where you want to be so you don't waste time in the mid in the midterm like think from the end don't don't just go into it kind of um not having a target of of where you want to be at your goals so set some set some really good goals for yourself short term long term and i think you know that's going to you know and ultimately like i said before just be yourself the more you be yourself the more people are going to connect with you. So, you know, the more you try to put on a front and fake and talk shit and, you know, try to copy what this guy's doing and that guy's doing because they're successful, the less you're going away from being yourself. And you're never going to tell, you know, unless you're an amazing fucking actor, you're never going to tell that story like those people don't really know that story. So just be yourself, set some goals, you know, easy ones to start off with, harder ones for the long term. See where it takes you, man. I uh, sure want, also, also wants to know, What's it feel like to have someone quote or share your songs on a status, etc.? That is the reason that we fucking make music. To me, the reason we, you know, like I make music and I'm sure it's one of the reasons that you make it as well is, like, you know, people connect with it and there's nothing like that validation of people, you know, taking something you wrote and, and showing how much it means to them by putting in a status and, you know, even getting a tattoo of it or anything like that. So the first time anyone ever did that was for a mixtape track I did, um called Guess I Stress, uh, was on my first mixtape, and this guy made it as his, like, MSN fucking name, and mm. I, I printed it out, like, I took mm. a, like, you know, copy mm. and pasted it, and printed it and put it on the wall, I was like, fuck, <laughs> this is dope. <laughs> Big thing. Yeah. Tom Doherty said, what are your future goals? Man, my future goals at the moment is to get the next legacy done, uh, promote this first one, uh, keep promoting it, give it its time to breathe. I was in a mad rush before because, you know, I was, I was stuck in a band for six years and I didn't feel like we released enough material. So I was like, i got to put out three EPs in one year and all this other shit. But once I got that out of my head and I was like, all right, you know, put out one EP, make sure it's done right. Give it some time to breathe. Give, give it some time to see if radio picks it up. See how the video goes go. And, um, you know, then I'll, I'll do the next one. And I'm just, I'm taking my time with everything now a little bit more. I've kind of put the brakes on myself. So my next goal... I'm not setting setting massive ones at the moment that are, are going to keep me in a kind of state of urgency. My next goal is immediate. It's like get the next legacy finished, keep doing some more shows and more gigs and just promote the work, the current one that I got out. And that's it for now. Um, Matt Walmsy said, social media dictates the most artists are also promoters, live and DJs. How do you stay true to your music without crossing the line of becoming a promoter? I kind of dabbled in promoting, like, back in the New Funk days when, mm. you know, like, I wasn't really a promoter there. I was more like the host and I was kind of doing the online stuff and I was out, out in the trenches, like, you know, putting up the posters and that. And, like, I've never, I, like, I've been offered to take over clubs and I've been offered to jump in with promoters and do all this stuff before. And, you know, it's just not my, it's like, it's not my thing. I'm not, a, I'm not a gambling man. I'm not into fucking... It's more for DJs and shit. Yeah, it's it. So... And why they do it is because if they don't pull the numbers in, they're not going to get booked for the gigs in the first place. So when you see these cunts spamming the shit out of things, mm. when they play a set and they pull 100 people from their Facebook or something, that enables them to get more gigs. And as artists, if we don't promote our shit, who else is going to do it? So to a certain extent, we still have to fucking promote our shit unless you cunts are going to do it for us. That's right. Like in promoters as well, like, like the dudes that are doing that, promoting and being an artist a lot of them and then no disrespect to any of them but a lot of them are just swapping gigs for gigs so and they take they take their foot off their pedal and their eye off the ball when it comes to their own artistry because they assume that if they book such and such that they'll get another gig at such and such like I, I don't like all that shit like i'd rather fucking earn every little bit that i got even if it's the harder way and the more stubborn way to do it like i think it's more validating and more satisfying so yeah that's that cohen young said forte why did you cut your mullet off why did you cut the mullet off? Because the shit was red hot. <laughs> it was a beautiful mullet. I hate to see it go. But at the end of the day, it's um, created too much attention. 
Uh, once I pulled over and someone was driving past, and I'm pretty sure they're looking at my mullet. I don't know what else they're looking at, and they went boom straight into another car. So that's how much attention. <laughs> Is that a fucking causes. true story or what? It's a true story. What? I, <laughs> I was sitting there, got out, and then I seen someone's head turn. They're looking at me, obviously looking at mullet, and boom straight in the back of another car. It's a beautiful mullet. So it's like when you see a big pair of tits. You know what I mean? It's very distracting. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just I don't need the attention these days. Uh. Michael Losty said, where did the name Losty come from? Losty was my graph name. It was probably supposed to last for, you know, six months or whatever. And um, I, was, I was originally called Lost, just Lost. And I was I was painting at Toon Gabby one day with my friend Tommy. And he said to me, why don't you, you know, like, because everyone calls you by your graph name. And cunts are kind of going, hey, Lost, hey, Lost. And he's like, man, why don't you put a fucking E or an I or an O or Y or something on the end and make it more like a name. I was like, fucking good suggestion there, Tommy son. So I chucked the, I used to be with an E and then I used to alternate with the E and the Y. And then, um, yeah, when I, when I got my first gig at a rave hosting it, uh, the guy asked, what, what's the name you want on the flyer? And I was like, Losty. And they actually argued with me. They're like, are you sure you want that to be your name? And I was like, yeah, yeah, fucking don't worry about it. I didn't think that like 15 years later, like the shit would still be here. So, um, you know, I, I, I've had a lot of debate over the name. Like people, people can take it in a negative sense or a positive sense or whatever. But I reckon everyone, as they're growing up, and even when they're grown up, has felt lost at a time. Like I know I did when I was growing up, and especially that stage in my late teens and early twenties, I didn't know what I wanted to do in my life, and I didn't know, I didn't feel like I fit into society. I didn't want a normal job. I didn't want a nine to five. So I felt lost, and that's why I picked the name in the first place. So the fact that it's stuck all this time, you know, like my friends call me Lost Day. Like four calls me Lost Day. Red back. You know, Defiant, Cursor, uh, anyone that really, you know, Jimmy the Gent, Jimmy the Junkie, any of these guys that really know me would call me Lost though, because it's more like my real name. But, you know, like Losty is just a stage name that's that's stuck surprisingly for a very long time. So that's that. Uh, Lewis Portelli said, did you check out his mixtape? And if so, what did you think? Honestly, Lewis, I haven't heard fucking time. I come off the Stereo Sonic tour, I had. A bunch of gigs after that into Christmas. I've been promoting Legacy non-stop. I got a bunch of people's shit in my computer that I got to listen to, and like even beats for myself. I've got four or five collabs that I haven't even wrote verses for. Like I, I actually got dropped off two collabs because the people that had me on them got the shits were waiting for my shit. I got a rapper tag I'm supposed to do. I got all this shit. I just haven't had time. I promise I will listen to it. Like when I've got five minutes to scratch my ass and I'm. I'm going through my shit that's in my computer. I promise. Alex Smith said, where do you see yourself rapping, your rapping career in five years? Hopefully just uh, more of the same but better. So hopefully um, doing my own shows, like packing out places, you know, like on the level of what, you know, like these other dudes in Aussie hip-hop are doing where they're, where they're not the support act anymore. They're the headliner. Like I'd love to be doing that. Um, if I'm doing support shows still, that you know, really good ones. Um... Just, you know, have a, have a good body of work behind me by then where I, where I feel like I'm satisfied with it because at the moment I don't. Uh, I don't feel like I put out enough stuff. So, yeah, man. Like like what I said before about guys starting out, like your goals for when you're starting out compared to like when you're this deep, what I am into it, they're kind of different. Like when you're starting out, you need short-term and long-term goals. When you've been doing it for a while, I kind of just focus on the short-term ones because I've got to get what's immediate done and those things are already a big deal, you know? Like, so... Yeah. Wesley Sullivan said, when are you going to update your page with a bio of the artists you've met, opened for and worked with, and don't forget stickers in the merch? Again, when I get time to scratch my ass. <laughs> uh, I've, I've got a bit of a thing there. Um, but yeah, I got, look, stickers are coming, uh, t-shirts are coming and all that. So it's, 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 it's a new year, it's 2015. There are definitely things I've got to do. So, um, you know, I just put out the, the legacy hard copies and made 1,500 of them numbered and signed. So... Just getting rid of them at the moment, they're nearly gone, and then when that's when they're gone, I'll do the next thing, you know. Angie Coco said, You're a ledge and can't wait to get your new album. When's your new album come out? The next one will come out, um, I think probably I was gonna say February, but I reckon more like April now, April, May. Thank you very much, by the way. Daniel Dye said, Um, what in your opinion has been the best part of your career, bro? Like playing raves or doing hip hop? Doing hip hop, I think, because it's what I really love to do. Like the raves, I kind of got the opportunity to do it. I was, I was broke. I was, I was, I was at Seven Hills Shopping Center, 
and I had no money, and there was an ad in the 3D world that said MC Wanted. This was like, you know, year 99, and I went and did it, and it led to all this shit that surprisingly lasted a very, very long time, and opened doors in my career, And but it's not natural to me. Like, I don't know that music, I don't listen to that music in my own time, I don't... And I'm not trying to convince anybody that I'm fucking hip hop or anything, because I know cunts are gonna say that straight away. But and I, you know what? I'm not hip hop. I listen to fucking everything. You know, I listen to bands. I listen to fucking trap music. I listen to hip hop. But I'd say what feels natural to me to perform and to write and to listen to the most is hip hop. Like I'm a rapper, and I love I love writing hip hop songs. And like I don't really make any dance music tracks. Like it's very rare that I go and actually make one. So. Um, and when I do, I'm always kind of struggling to do it. Like, I'm always having to think. It never comes natural. So I'm more, um, I feel, it still feels easy to me just to make hip-hop and do it. So, you know, my good times are, are doing it. Like, out of all the gigs I did last year, I've got to say, the one where I felt like I was the most happiest and having the most fun was when we went up and did Curse's show at, um, at Newcastle. Like, being yeah. with all the boys, hanging out in the hotel, going and rocking the under 18s and going and rocking over 18s like to me that was and I literally did one song at each at each of those shows it's you know fun. it's fun like that's what feels feels natural to me so it's good yeah. to do it with um, sh do it with your friends and not just be out there by yourself yeah that's it man that's it like the rave shit it's been because I have been by myself like I made lots of friends there over the years in that in those circles but like I have felt very alone like my 21st birthday I spent in a fucking rave by myself we barely knew anybody you know so I missed out on a lot of uh, you know times in my life and things to to do that shit you know yeah you have worked very hard over the years mm. Ricky Lee Real said what's the next big for you next big thing for you the next big thing is um, I'm shooting a, uh, a pilot at the moment for a major TV station um, I'm also I'm also booking the talent for a big stage at Defcon which is what I did this year and I'm doing it again so they're two things my legacy EP, obviously. Um, I've been offered a management deal in the UK. I'm looking for a manager here because I'm just getting exhausted with having to do everything by myself. So um, yeah, they're the, they're the next biggest things on my plate. You know, I'm opening for Nelly, Bob, and um, Lupe Fiasco tomorrow night. So straight off the top, that's what like what I can think of. Um, Jared Van Leash out said, "Who's the realest rapper in Oz and why?" No bias, but I think it's this guy here because, and I think I can say it with no bias because um I know him and I've grown up with him for so long and I've seen everything that's happened in his personal life outside of rap music and I'd say if it's you know I think I think there's you I think there's rates I think there's curse. There's a handful. There's a handful. And, I, and like, people are going to go, oh, you, you're fucking biased because it's your friends. But I suppose that knowing what they're like in their real life makes it not biased. So, you know, another one is Beaton. Like, whenever, you know, Beaton's like the Dr. Dre of us, where you just he's got an album that you wonder if it's ever going to drop and he's this elusive character. But he when he does rap and when, he's, when he speaks, he speaks straight from his heart. So, to me, they're the realest rappers. Like, you just, like, you can tell when shit's authentic. You can tell when someone, you know, if someone's talking a bunch of shit that they do on records and then, you know, you go and see him at a nine to five job during the week, you kinda know that, you know, you're not <laughs> you did why are you bothering? Like it's like you know, some people are just storytellers and that's the way that they portray their art. So if you talk about realist, I'd say those guys I mentioned, Forte, Cursor, Rates, J D, you know the, the guy the guys that I know what they're like in real life, I can vouch to say that they're the realest realest rappers that I know. Because they're not talking any shit. And uh, Tyson Williams would like to say he can see a lot of potential in you and he reckons you could go a long way. Keep it real, bros. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Stephen Richardson also said, biggest fan right here. Give him a shout out. He said you're a fucking legend. Stephen Richardson, shout out. Fucking sick cunt. And Jared Hickey said, what's it actually like doing what you do? It's, um, it's a lot of hard work. It's not what you think most of the time. So... You know, what do you, what do you, what's the, what's the real deal for you on this shit? What's it like doing what I do? Yeah. Uh, it's, everything has its ups and its downs. Exactly. There's probably more going into it behind the scenes than what you know. And, um, yeah, it's not all fucking sunshine and lollipops all the time. <laughs> uh, Nathan, Nathan Marshall, a couple of shout outs before we finish up. Nathan Marshall said, 
Shout out to 4610, 4207, Brothers in Jail, Garth, Crombie, Nella, and all the other brothers locked up. Shout out to all them. And Nick Scott said, Forte, a good name for a dopey cunt. And he didn't even spell dopey properly. But looking at your photo, Nick Scott, if you're the one fucking sperm that made it, <laughs> I hate to see the other retarded fucks. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, Lost though. No worries, my brother. Sure to look forward to his uh, new EP dropping soon. Um, the track we got with Curse, uh, film clips, all that. And um, yeah, there'll be some more music in the near future. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Thanks for having us.